Well, hello all, and welcome back to 115 Gaming, your home for all the tips and tools you need to excel your games of Blood on the Clock Tower. And today I'm excited to kick off a brand new series all based on Blood on the Clock Tower called The Clock Tower Corner. And this series is just going to be a bunch of small, bite-sized little videos that break down certain characters, certain scripts, certain roles, and certain strategies that'll help you get better at playing your games of Blood on the Clock Tower. And today, this first episode, we're gonna kick off with just the beginner script, Trouble Brewing. We're going to be talking about first night information roles in Trouble Brewing. In Trouble Brewing, there are four first night roles. The chef, the librarian, the washerwoman, and the investigator. Oftentimes, I've found that new players, even experienced players sometimes, can write off first night roles. They're the expendable roles, if you will. You only get to do one thing, and after that, you pretty much have spent your whole power, and you're not really going to do anything else for the rest of the game. I think this is pretty false. I think in Blood on the Clock Tower, no matter what character role you get, you can always do something crazy with it that will actually affect the game in big ways. And so I want to talk about three strategies that you can employ with first night information roles. Now keep in mind, these are not the only three strategies available with these roles. These are just the three that one, I've seen a lot, or two, that I think are a good way to work around the bias against first night roles. The first one is one that I've kind of already talked about, and that is the basic strategy. And it's a strategy that I often see most people fall into when they get a first night information roll. And that is, the basic strategy is that whenever you get a first night roll, on the first day, you just come out with your role and your information, you say what you learned, and then you just kind of sit back and enjoy the rest of the game on the sidelines. There are pros and cons to this. Pros, getting all the information out there so everyone's on the same page can be good. And that can influence the whole game, especially if somebody else already has info that can coincide with the info that you've received. The problem with this, though, is when all of the first night information roles come out and they give all of their information, uh, there's a couple problems. One, you could be drunk or poisoned, and so you could be making this blind assumption that your information is correct, and you could use this to make cases against people for the whole game from day one that maybe not be as airtight as you actually think they are. And two, when you come out with all this information on day one, you're basically giving the evil team all of the tools they need to learn how to lie against you. So once, you know, the four first night rolls come out, you've basically given the demon a free spy roll. Not only do they know who the two to four first night rolls that are in the game, they also know all the information that they learned. And so even though it may seem incriminating that you can point to one or two players and say they're one of the minions, it's actually kind of more helps the evil team because now the evil team knows who you are, they know what information you have. So one, they can work around the information you've given them, but two, they know you're a first night role, so they're not gonna kill you at night. They'll end up picking somebody else who's probably a more powerful role. So I would like to segue into two strategies that I much prefer when I'm playing first night information roles. The first of those strategies is what I call the silent strategy. And the silent strategy is very simple. When you get your role, your role's information from the first night, I recommend that you just keep quiet about who you are and you also keep quiet about your information. And this actually accomplishes a couple of things. One, if you keep quiet with your information, it gives you time to actually go talk to the people that you've been getting readings on and you can try and verify your information silently. And that way you can prove maybe if you're drunk or poisoned without tipping anybody off. And if something is weird and suspicious or the information isn't lining up, you can come to the group and say, hey, I think I'm the drunk or hey, I think I'm poisoned. And that is good solid info. Whereas if you just came out and gave faulty info without knowing that it was faulty info, you're gonna throw off the good team's entire game. So stay silent about your information. Go talk to people, go figure things out. Try and verify your information before you come up with it. So another reason you wanna do this is your information can be cru crucial later in the game. If you, if you are the investigator, for instance, and you know that one of two players is a particular minion, if you wait until three, four days into the game and suddenly like the empath or the fortune teller or whatever, or maybe another chef, another first night role, maybe that information has now coincided with other people's information and now you're pretty certain, oh, I think I know exactly which one of my two players is a minion. That's a much better way of handling the investigator than just coming out on day one and saying, oh, uh, I know that one of these two players is the minion. Because one, you're giving that minion the ability to learn how to bluff around that. Whereas two, you can much more easily trip an evil player up if they don't know that you actually have information on them. So if you keep it quiet, the 
evil player, if you were the investigator in this example, might come out and make some sort of social blunder or make some sort of information mistake. And you can come out and say, oh, actually, I've been the investigator this whole time. And I learned that either you or this person is the minion, but we've just confirmed that this person is good because they nominated maybe the virgin and they died. That means you're a minion. So guys, we can't trust him. We should execute him. So keep silent about your information until the right time when you know it's critical to come out with a piece of, of information. Maybe three, four days in, maybe even save it until the last day because it can be a lot easier to trip the evil team up if they don't know the information that the good team has. Thirdly, this is what I like to call the swap strategy or the bluff strategy. In Blood on the Clock Tower, because there are some roles that are only first night roles and some roles that are, are recurring information roles, and then there are some roles that have some other extra power available to them, what you want to do as the good team is make sure that you protect the people who have recurring information or who have more powerful abilities. And the way that you can do that is you can actually bluff as a more powerful role when you're only a first night character. Now, why would you do this? Won't people find it suspicious if you lie about who you are and somebody else is claiming to be that role? Well, one, you just need to get rid of this assumption that lying in Blood on the Clock Tower means you're evil because there's so many reasons why you would want to lie as a good person in the game. And this is one of those reasons. So if you know that you want to protect somebody that is maybe a potential empath or a potential fortune teller or a potential undertaker, those are all powerful information gathering roles in Trouble Brewing that you want to keep alive as long as possible. So what you could do if you find a player who hard claims is one of those roles to you, you could do a little swap. Maybe tell the person who's the undertaker to claim the librarian, while you claim to be the undertaker. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, it's simple. The demon doesn't want to kill first night information roles. They want to kill the powerful recurring information gathering roles, or the more powerful roles like the monk. So the demon is always trying to get people to hard claim as the impact, the undertaker, the raven keeper, or the monk, right? because they want to target those people. Well, not the Raven Keeper, but they want to know who the Raven Keeper is so they can avoid them. But the point is that if the demon knows who everyone is and the demon knows who the first night information rules are, they're not going to pick you to die at night because they're going to pick someone else who they know is probably more likely to be a more powerful role. So if you swap roles with someone and say, I'm going to claim that I'm the Undertaker and you claim that you're the Librarian, what's going to happen? The demon is going to avoid killing the real Undertaker and they're going to pick you or another first night role instead. And that's okay because once you die after receiving your first night information, it doesn't matter if you die. The good team is not losing any powerful information. The good team is not losing any powerful abilities. They're losing a first night role. And so what you wanna do in this bluffing strategy or swapping strategy is you want to bluff as a more powerful role that the demon will want to kill, or you wanna to wanna to swap with somebody who's a more powerful role to protect them. That way they can get information for more days in a row and the demon will have wasted time killing you. And that's how you're gonna win as the good team. Your goal is to protect the powerful recurring roles and to waste the demon's kills. So those are my tips on how to handle first night roles and trouble brewing. I hope this goes to show that just because something seems very obvious and plain on the surface, and Blood on the Clock Tower, there are a lot of ways that you can manipulate these abilities in order to help the good team in ways more than just saying, oh, well, I'm the investigator and here's the info that I got. Always try and look outside the box and think of ways you can manipulate the game or you can socially manipulate the other players in order to benefit your team and in order to get more information and take out the demon. All right, that's it for this episode of the Clock Tower Corner. I don't know when the next episode is gonna come out and I don't know which script we're gonna cover. I'm thinking maybe covering Bad Moon Rising or maybe covering the minions of Trouble Brewing. We'll see. Until next week, see ya. Thank you.